I'm going to show you a new feature that was added to some of your web parts, but I'm also going to show you three other features you probably missed. Let's get into it. The first new feature is card animations. So there's a couple of web parts that got an update. It was a kind of a cryptic message in the, the roadmap a little while ago that just talked about card animations. We didn't know what kind of animations. Are they going to be bouncing across the screen? Are they going to be dropping in from the sky? What is the deal with this? It, it was a little hard to understand until the feature actually dropped. And it's, and it's subtle, but I think it's a sign of some really interesting upcoming uh, enhancements to your pages. So let me, let's, let's switch over to my desktop. Let me show you what I mean. I'm on a sample intranet page right now. Let me just go into edit mode. Uh, the, some of the web parts that, were, that uh, will, will get this or that have it now actually are the editorial card and uh, image cards, which I, it doesn't seem to be there yet. Maybe that hasn't actually rolled out yet, but but definitely the people card. It does work on the people card. So let's let me just add in a section here. Um, I'll just make a two column section and I will just throw a couple of I'll th I'll throw an editorial card in this one. And we'll do a people card in this one. Let me set this up to be, how about Adele and uh, Diego. Okay, so we've got a little bit of content here. We don't even really have to customize this just to see this uh, in effect. But if we go into the properties for, let's just start with the people card. You will see an option here, animation. Uh, the description says, add a depth effect when you browse through the page. Preview or publish to view animations. So, it still doesn't tell us what it's doing exactly. It's some kind of animation. If we go to the editorial card, we'll see the same thing. The same animation thing. It defaults to on. So, if you have noticed something a little unusual as you scroll the page, which I'm about to show you, that's what this feature is. Now, let me just save and close this, and you just saw it. If you missed it, let me scroll to the top of pay, the page, let me refresh, and then watch when those cards come into view. It's going to be right after this section. Let me scroll down, and there it was again. They kind of float up to the top. It's a very subtle animation. Like I said, it's a subtle one, but they float to the top. It adds a little bit of movement to your page. And that's, that's a good thing. Where this is going is, I think, a, well beyond a simple float up to the top. You see in public websites all the time, there's motion. We, we've had like the parallax effect for a very long time in the, the HTML world. So parallax isn't really anything new, but floating in from the side, from the top, moving across the page as the user scrolls down, those are all things that are a lot more common to see on the web, on the public web. Here in SharePoint, this is really the first time we've gotten something like this. I believe that Microsoft is testing this with just a simple float up, which is probably the most, it's the most common to see. It's not quite, uh, it's not as distracting as some of the other types of animations. But if users like this, if people are, are, are using this and talking about this, I think we're going to see more animation styles show up. I won't be surprised if we see the option to, let me go back into edit mode. Uh, there we go. So, and I wouldn't be surprised if under the animation toggle, we start to get a drop-down list of animation styles so that we could have things, uh, in this case, with a two-column layout, we could have things float in from each side. I think that would be really, really cool. I think it would be a very nice um, way to draw attention to the cards that you want to the, the user to focus on on that part of the page. So I think we're going to see a lot more for, for that. But for now, this is just a taste. And like I said, it's defaulting to on. So any editorial cards you have, any people cards you've got, 
will already start to do this. And you're, you, like I said, you may have noticed this. Let me know in the comments if you've noticed that this was already active and you just didn't know this was a new feature. And if you wanted to turn it off, at least you know where to turn that off now. The image one, try it out. I, I didn't see any effect that it had on the image web part. So uh, maybe it hasn't rolled out. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Let me know. And if you found this video valuable so far, then click that like button and subscribe to the channel, which lets me know that you want to keep seeing videos just like this because I watch all of these videos I put out for those types of metrics, that level of engagement. So just let me know. Now, all these features in this video are really creative and powerful ways to enhance your pages, your page viewing experience, how you're, how you're displaying data from your SharePoint environment. But how are you protecting that data. That leads us actually into this video's sponsor. Today, many organizations rely on Microsoft 365 for everything from email, collaboration, conferencing, and calendars to documents, internal communications. Yet this critical data can be lost as easily as it's created. Threats like cyber attacks, retention gaps, or even a simple delete click can leave data inaccessible and cause costly downtime. Nakivo Backup and Replication seamlessly bridges this gap to ensure your Microsoft 365 65 data and Exchange Online, OneDrive for Business, SharePoint Online, and Microsoft Teams is backed up and easily recoverable. You can send Microsoft 365 backups and backup copies anywhere, local folders, cloud platforms, NFS and SMB shares, tape media, and duplication appliances. The solution offers advanced ransomware protection features that include backup encryption and immutability. Microsoft 365 data loss does not need to happen. With Nakivo backup and replication, you can ensure maximum protection of Microsoft 365 data. Make sure to check out Nakivo in the link in the description below for a free 15-day trial. Next, let's talk about the 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 other feature that you'll actually see, uh, you you probably didn't notice it. I didn't notice it when it first landed because I don't really look at the, the command bar as often as I probably should. I don't know. It's the preview mode. Now, this has been on the roadmap for a while as well. But it's 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 still a somewhat new feature as far as being rolled out to environments. We're here in edit mode. That's exactly where we want to be to see this preview mode. You'll see it right here at the top. It just says preview, and it's got two, the, 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 the real visual identifier for what this is going to be able to let you do is you'll see through the icon, it's a phone and a computer screen. So what do we get when we click on this button? We're going to be able to view what this page will look like in either full screen on a computer or on a mobile device. So we'll see the desktop view, and we can click on mobile. And now we see the mobile view of how this looks in that responsive mode where it's just an all a single column layout. This is really important for you to be able to now test your pages before you click that publish button. It's very, very valuable. In the past, the people who knew about the developer toolbar, which usually are the, the, the developers, really, uh, even CSS developers, but we knew that you could go into the developer toolbar on your browser and you could view it there. It, it takes several extra clicks. It's not that easy to do uh, while still seeing, without, without it taking up a ton of room on your, on your browser screen. So this, this actually simplifies things, makes this more accessible to end users and to regular old page authors who don't need to know anything about a developer toolbar. They just need to make sure that their page looks good on, on everything on mobile devices, uh, whether that's a phone, a tablet, whether it's on a computer, wherever that, that, that page is going to be seen, they just need to make sure it looks good, right? So this feature is a really cool one to do just that. With one click, you can now uh, go into preview mode before, again, before you click the publish button. And you can make sure that that content's going to look perfect, exactly the way you want it. That's what this feature is all about. And I think it's a really awesome feature, kind of long overdue, but it's great that we at least have it now. Now we're done in edit mode, so I'm just going to republish this right now. It's just my test site anyway. 
And now we're going to talk about another feature that really slipped under the radar. It, it was announced um, on, on a roadmap item again, but it was it was still kind of vague. There really weren't a lot of details about it. Uh, and I personally was worried that sites where I've had a custom um, SharePoint framework components to handle the header and footer uh, we're going to be affected, but there's no sign of that being affected at all. So let's jump into the settings icon, the gear icon, and we're going to go down to change the look. Now, we've this, this menu isn't new at all, but it did get some updates. What do I mean by that? Um, let me make sure it comes up. There we go. So now, now we've got change the look, and we've got a header and footer option in here. When we go in, in here, uh, the layout don't uh, don't believe that's changed at all, but the design tab of this menu definitely has. So, what do we have in here that's new? Well, we've got an image option here where we can set, since we're on the header, we can set a background image on the header itself. So, if we were to go to add an image, let me go to stock images. And let me pick something I think might look good. Uh, you do have to be a little careful because uh, an image that's a little bit too busy could be distracting. Now, there are ways to deal with that. I'll show you that once we pick an image. But first, let me pick um, this one. This looks a little bit more uh, subtle. And I'll select this one. And now we will see. Let me just close this. Oh, We'll, we'll lose the image uh, if we don't save it first. So let me go back here and go to stock images, select this again. Okay, so we'll have to look at this without closing it. So we've got that background image now. Uh, notice hit, in this case, this image doesn't interfere with my my menu items for my nav. Uh, it does interfere with this a little bit. So we can control that. We can we can set an overlay for that image. Now, if this sounds a little familiar, we have we have gotten some other web parts that have this. Uh, I believe the editorial card is the most recent one that has a control like this. But we can set an overlay and then control how dark we want that overlay to be. So we can set it to something like this. And now, when we save this and get this sidecar out of the way. Now our, uh, our links over here for following site access and the uh, Viva Connections link, uh, they, they pop out more. So the, the background, even though there is stuff back here, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't kind of hide or distract from those items. People can still see those items. So you've got options here. Uh, let me just get back in here. You've got options for the overlay. Again, you can make it as bright or dark as you want. So depending on that image, you'll want to adjust this to get things kind of dialed in just right. You've also got some options to control the font here for the menu. So you can change the, the fonts that are available, which are tied into the SharePoint brand center and the branding for the site. So uh, you, you may have different fonts available here, depending on how branding has been set up in your environment. But once we do this, this, we can start to talk about that footer. The footer has some similar options as well. Let me go back in here. We go into the footer. And again, we'll see options for the, uh, for the image on the footer. So if I wanted to pick a different image, maybe something like this. Again, I don't think it's wise to choose an image that's that's too busy. Uh, you know, a crowd scene with people in it that, that may not be the best uh, type of image to use. But again, I'm, I'm not really a designer. So if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. I'm still trying to really understand uh, vi visual design on things because I, I, I've said it before, I've got no artistic ability at all. So I think this is going to look good, but I'm sure we'll have to set a really dark overlay on this. Let's see what this looks like. Okay. Um, it actually, yeah, it does look good. It does look pretty good. I think a darker image would look better. So what if we increase the darkness on here? Uh, let me change the overlay to, um, what if we went with the dark one, but not, not necessarily the black one? Okay, that one's that one's good. Let me just compare it to black. 
Okay, black looks better with that. Okay, so now we could save this. I didn't want to change any of the fonts on that. I like the uh, I like the I like the fonts the way they are. So now we can close that, and we've got a little bit of something interesting going on in both the header and the footer. Now we've got that image, uh, or, or two different images. It's not distracting, but it does add a little bit of character to it. And instead of just a plain solid color, uh, I, I think this this adds a little bit of pizzazz to that site, to this to this site in particular. So let me know what you think about the, the header options, adding a custom image, being able to add some character into your site, whether that's a corporate image, uh, that's, that's some sort of uh, something associated with your, your organization's brand. You have a lot of options here for, for, for setting that. Uh, another thing, I didn't uh, point this out, but I should. The, if we go back in here, both the header and the footer options, if you want to kind of dial in the image, or maybe it's a large image, you want to be able to set the focal point or do some editing on that particular image, you'll see the advanced editing button here. If we click on this, we'll see options. We can change the focal point like you've seen with the image web part. So you and then over here in the preview, you'll see what that would look like uh, in different aspect ratios. We'll be able to crop the image. So if you wanted to uh, focus in on just particular spots, um, it, it really helps you to control what part of that image is displayed in the viewport itself. So you've got options here for filters, uh, adjusting brightness, things like that. Again, it lets you really dial in the image and get that look that you're going for without having to resort to editing the image in a, a Photoshop or some photo editor and making changes you think would help and then having to re-upload and do all that. This really saves you a lot of time. So I think this, this feature is going to be very popular popular with, uh, with, with people. Let me uh, escape out of here and close this out. So let's go on to the fourth feature. But first, if you're still getting up to speed on SharePoint and you're trying to learn how to do things the right way and not just a way that works, then I've got a course that's perfect for you, and it's on SharePoint's number one feature, which is a list. This beginner-focused course on SharePoint lists uh, walks you through everything on lists to get started. It gets you all the way to where you're you are starting to learn advanced features. If you're interested, check the link in the description below. But now let's talk about this last feature. It's called Flexible Sections, and it's probably the most significant upgrade to the SharePoint page experience since we started to move to the modern page experience, which has been a number of years now. So this is a major, major feature. And when I saw it, it just blew me away with what Microsoft was able to get SharePoint to do. It is incredible. You're going to love it. So click or tap the screen to find out what flexible sections are and how to use them.